It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise with deep gratitude for the People's Action Group in Waterloo Region. They are a group of concerned people who have lived on the streets and in the shelters of Kitchener, Waterloo and Cambridge, people who have navigated housing systems meant to help them. They wrote to me to let me know that they need us, and I quote, it has been said of homeless people that they are not the problem, but that they are the result of a problem. Problems of affordable housing, problems of our treatment of mental health, and addiction. I want them to know that they are absolutely right. They are right to ask us to use our positions of privilege and power to think about the impact of each and every piece of legislation that goes through this House on people who are sleeping rough at night. They're right to ask us if we see shelters as a solution to homelessness or a band-aid for the same. And they're right. I apologize to the member. Please stop the clock. Members that are coming into the chamber, I need you to be quiet. Okay. Restart the clock. Again, I apologize to the member for Kitchener Center. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. They are right to ask us if we see shelters as a solution to homelessness or a band-aid for the same. They are right when they say that homelessness can only be solved by the hard work and compassion of people like me, people like us. In your position of power, you have the ability to become a part of the solution, to join in on the hard work and compassion needed to address homelessness. I refuse to lose hope because they are right to call on us to do better, and we must do better. The people of Ontario deserve nothing less. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Haldeman Norfolk. Yes, well, thank you, uh, thank you, Speaker. The illegal blockade of Highway 6 at Caledonia must come down. It's a position I've consistently fought for over the past 14 years. Illegal blockades are dangerous, seriously hinder the movement of people, goods, and services. And illegal blockades that force tractor trailers and heavy truck Heavy trucks onto county roads have proven very dangerous. The Caledonia bypass blockade must come down. The Caledonia blockade is part of an ongoing national insurgence. Protesters have blocked rail lines in several parts of Canada to show solidarity with hereditary Wet'suwet'en chiefs opposed to the construction of the coastal gas link natural gas pipeline in British Columbia. The provincial government continues to call on the federal government to continue to step up and take responsibility with a coordinated plan of action to dismantle illegal blockades. We respect the right to assemble, but enough is enough. People are being hurt and their livelihoods affected. I'm in my second week at Queen's Park pushing this position with my colleagues, with members of Cabinet and the Premier, I and my staff are on the ground at Caledonia and Hagersville, monitoring and communicating. Caledonia needs some help. Thank you, Speaker. Member for Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, there are grave injustices taking place each and every day across this province, including to my constituents. Ontarians have unjustly lost their freedom. Children have been taken from their families, refugees who were fleeing persecution could face torture and death if deported without fair and proper legal representation. These injustices and the many other violations to people's freedoms are the direct result of the recent 30 per cent cut to legal aid in Ontario. To add insult to injury, this, these cuts are, it doesn't save money. The Canadian Bar Association found that for every dollar spent on legal aid, governments save $6. Mr. Speaker, this means the government has added as much as three quarters of a billion dollars to costs of other parts of our justice system and social service. That includes courts, jails, child protection services, and welfare roles. Last week, I met with the legal aid lawyers and their union, the Society of United Professionals, about these cuts. I want to thank the frontline staff lawyers for their dedication to our justice system, and I join them in calling on the Premier to reverse his $133 million cuts to Legal Aid Ontario. Member Statements. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
On Friday, February 28, I was pleased to host the Honourable Ministers Rickford and Walker at a small roundtable discussion in Metcalf to discuss energy, hydro, natural gas and more in Carleton. Constituents and representatives from various parts of my riding of Carleton, including local City of Ottawa Councillor George DeRoos, gathered together to share feedback and give ideas on what our government can do to help build Ontario together. It was a very informative discussion, and the ministers were kind enough to stay for almost two hours, answering everyone's questions and taking notes for follow-up. I want to thank Minister Rickford and Minister Walker for taking the time to visit my riding and to get a first-hand understanding of the challenges faced by rural communities in Carleton who are still considered quote-unquote urban because they fall under the City of Ottawa's municipal boundaries. Communities like Metcalf, Osgood, Richmond, North Gore, Ashton, Greeley, Cars, Vernon, Beckett's Landing, and more. I look forward to continuing the conversation and working with both ministers to be a strong voice for the people I'm here to represent and serve. I also want to take an opportunity to wish everyone a happy International Women's Day. Last year, I held my first annual International Women's Day events across the riding, and they were a huge success. Once again, I'm hosting two free community events for International Women's Day on Sunday, March 8. Breakfast in Richmond and high tea in Metcalf. I encourage everyone to come out and attend. You can get more information on my website, goldiempp.ca, or call my office at 613-838-4425. Thank you. We're going to continue with member statements, and I would ask members to please quieten down. Member statements, the member for Kiwetnong. Good morning, Speaker. Uh, this morning, I would like to tell a story about uh, where I come from, my community of Kingfisher Lake. What many people don't know is that we moved to where we live now in 1966, but before this, our community and others were part of Big Beaver House. Kingfisher Lake uh, reserved, re uh, received reserve status in 1976. We were placed under the Indian Act and forced to uh, under an elected band council system. Our first government school was built in 1973. This school had the only system for hydro and sewage in the community. In the early 80s, the community installed its own uh, electrification system. We got a gravel road in uh, 1987. We got sewage and uh, running water in 1994. Despite all this, there has been 20 plus deaths by suicide in my community since 1987. And across the Kiwetnuk Riding since 1986, we've had over 400 deaths by suicide. This is what colonialism looks like. As a community and as First Nations, uh, we will continue to fight for our right to exist, our right to practice who we are, and our right to speak our language. So I ask, how do we fix this? Some say reconciliation, but how does, how does this work when Ontario doesn't acknowledge that this, that this is broken, this, this is a broken relationship, and that reconciliation is dead? Some say, uh, I hear, say that reconciliation never really existed. Miigwech. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Guelph. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to compliment the students in the Community Environmental Leadership Program and Youth Action on Climate Change. They did an amazing job moderating a climate town hall hosted by Guelph's MP, including Mayor Guthrie and myself. The town hall filled Harcourt United Church with so many people that they actually had to turn people away. Speaker, it's clear. People want climate action, and people are deeply disappointed that the government has not brought forward a credible climate plan since the Auditor General tore apart their environment plan. I was especially impressed by how the students connected job creation to climate action. Global investors have invested $2.6 trillion in renewable, in renewable energy in the last decade and will invest an additional 3.5 billion dollars every single year over the next five years. Speaker, young people want jobs in the clean economy, but it is hard to see how Ontario will attract these investment dollars when the government is ripping up renewable energy contracts and peddling a made-to-fail climate plan. Young people are demanding a livable future, and I urge the government to listen to their call for urgent action on the climate crisis. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. The next statement, the member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. Last year in December, 
I was pleased to announce on behalf of the Deputy Premier and Minister of Health that the Cambridge North Dumfries Ontario Health Team was one of the 24 chosen to launch our government's new model of care to end hallway health care and build a connected and sustainable health care system centred on the needs of patients. We've been working collaboratively in Cambridge and North Dumfries on health care and on many things for a while, thanks to organizations such as Langs Community Health Centre, which really is a focal point for people to access services and supports that they need, along with Cambridge Memorial Hospital and other organizations that continue to work to innovate, improve, and support health care in our community. Congratulations and thank you to the health care providers, organizations, and leaders, people like Dr. Sharon Ball. Cambridge Memorial Hospital President Patrick Gaskin and Bill Davidson, Lang's Executive Director, and of course other community partners who helped plan the Cambridge North Dumfries Ontario Health Team and worked to make it a reality. Thank you to all of our healthcare professionals and providers for what they do every day serving Cambridge and North Dumfries. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The Member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Outfitters in my riding are facing a really hard time right now. The government has deemed the northern herd of moose too small to hunt. So what does the government do? Do they look at the dozens of moose who get killed on the same tracks of railroad every year? No. This government that says that they are open for business is putting all of those small business operators at risk. Outfitter brings in tourism. They create wealth in their community, but by now, many of them won't be able to stay open. Speaker, do we want to protect these majestic animals? For sure. I have to ask the member for Kitchener Conestoga to withdraw the unparliamentary remark that I heard him utter. We already have a lot of pets. No Withdraw. <laughs> Apologize to the member for nickel belt. I'll give you extra time. Speaker, do we want to protect these majestic animals? For sure. I don't know one northerner who does not want a healthy moose population, but. When the federal government shut down the cod fishery, they put in place a compensation system so that people can transition, business could stay alive. It should be the same for my constituents and all across the North who invested in their outfitting business. Richard Como from Hardwood Post, Paul and Angie Chartrand from Big Bear Camp, Jim Loisel from JNL Lakeview Retreat, Henri and, and Annie Roberts from Tatachipicata Lake Lodge, Gary Stocking, King Capel uh, from Thunderstock Outfitters, and the list goes on, Speaker. All these small businesses are at risk because of this government decision. They deserve government attention. They deserve government compensation. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. This past Friday, on behalf of the Honourable Monty McNaught and the Minister of Labour, the Training and Skills Development, I officially opened a second action centre in Oshawa to provide services and supports to approximately 1,700 workers from independent parts supplier companies impacted by the closure of the General Motors assembly plant. Speaker, the action centre is in partnership with Unifor, and the new centre connects workers with job and training opportunities counseling services and workshops that helped them improve their job search, resume writing, and interview skills. Speaker, a job fair is also being organized on April 22, 2020 at Durham College in Oshawa to help connect workers more quickly with local job opportunities. Speaker, we know this is a challenging time for many workers and families. Our government stands with the people in Durham Region, and we will continue to help those affected by the closure adjust and retrain so that they can quickly rejoin the workforce. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. And the next statement, the member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, our government, Martin Falls First Nations and Webaquay First Nation are taking a major step in unlocking jobs and opportunity in Northern Ontario's Ring of Fire region by entering into an historic agreement to advance the planning and the development of a proposed Northern Road Link. Yesterday, in downtown Toronto, they held a celebratory signing ceremony. This government is delivering on its promise to move forward with the development of the Ring of Fire with willing partners, including Indigenous groups and Northern communities. After 15 years of delay by the previous government, we said that we will build a road to the Ring of Fire, and we are working with our incredible partners in the Martin Falls First Nations and Webakwe First Nations to do just that and to make sure that we do it right. Together, 
We can bring jobs and prosperity to communities across the far north. This all-season road project would also improve access to health and social services and put in place proven infrastructure such as high-speed internet and reliable cellular carriers for the First Nations and other communities nearby. Chief Bruce Ashipinicum of Martin Falls First Nation said, and I quote, we look forward to working together with this province of Ontario to ensure the sustainable development of our ancestral territories. End of quote. Chief Cornelius Wabas of Webakwe First Nation said that they've been working together with Ontario for many years to reach this point. Finally, road development will help bring prosperity to communities across the entire region and better infrastructure, both on and off reserves. Thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning.